A particle is moving with acceleration a of t equals 24t plus 8 meters per second squared. The position at time t is s of 0 equals 9 meters, and the velocity at time t equals 0 is v of 0 equals 8 meters per second. Determine the particle's position at t equals 15 seconds. Notice here we are given the acceleration function, and we need to recover the velocity function, and then recover the position function to answer the question. Remember, if s of t is a position function, then s prime of t is equal to the velocity function, and s double prime of t equals v prime of t, which equals the acceleration function. So because we are given the acceleration function, if we find the antiderivative of the acceleration function, we can recover the velocity function because, again, the acceleration function is equal to the derivative of the velocity function, and when we determine an antiderivative, or evaluate an in-depth integral, we are undoing the derivative process. So we'll begin by determining the in-depth integral of the acceleration function, which is the same as evaluating the in-depth integral of the derivative of the velocity function, since again the derivative of the velocity function is the acceleration function, which we know is equal to the in-depth integral of 24t plus eight. And by evaluating this in-depth integral, we can recover the velocity function. Well, the antiderivative is equal to 24 times t squared divided by two plus eight t plus c. Simplifying, we have 12 t squared plus eight t plus c. So now we know the velocity function, v of t, must be in the form of 12 t squared plus eight t plus c. And now looking back at the given information, because we know v of zero equals eight, we can determine the specific velocity function. If v of zero is equal to eight, if we substitute zero for t, the velocity function must equal eight. This gives us the equation 12 times the square of zero plus eight times zero plus c must equal eight. Notice the left side simplifies to just c, we have c equals eight. Which means the specific velocity function with the given conditions is v of t equals 12t squared plus eight t plus eight. Let's go ahead and record this above. And now from here, if we find the antiderivative of the velocity function, we can recover the position function because the velocity function is equal to the derivative of the position function. So let's do that next. Again, evaluating the in-depth integral of the velocity function is the same as evaluating the in-depth integral of the derivative of the position function, which is equal to the in-depth integral of the quantity 12t squared plus 8t plus eight dt. And again, because the in-depth integral undoes the derivative process, this will help us determine the position function so that we can then answer the question. So the antiderivative is equal to 12 times t cubed divided by three plus eight times t squared divided by two plus eight t plus c. Simplifying, we now know the form of the position function, s of t, must be four t cubed plus four t squared plus eight t plus c. But going back to the given information, we know s of zero equals nine. Knowing s of zero equals nine allows us to determine the value of c, which will give us the exact position function so that we can then determine the position at t equals 15 seconds. So if s of zero equals nine, we have the equation four times the cube of zero plus four times the square of zero plus eight times zero plus c must equal nine. Again, on the left, everything simplifies to zero except c, giving us c equals nine. Now we know the position function is s of t equals four t cubed plus four t squared plus eight t plus nine. Let's also record this above. And now that we finally have the position function, we can determine the position at t equals 15 seconds. S of 15 
is equal to four times the cube of 15 plus four times the square of 15 plus eight times 15 plus nine. The particle's position at 15 seconds is 14,529 meters. I hope you found this helpful.